Welcome back to Lone Oak Farm 17 for episode 24, part 2. This is a behind the scenes video and a few of my subscribers asked how do I set up my videos between each video that I do. Um, so this is a kind of look at how I set up for the next episode. So this comes between episode 24 and episode 25. Spoiler alert, if you don't want the magic of the episodes and the storylines to be ruined, you might not want to watch this, um, because there's a few bits I do in here that kind of give away some of the secrets behind the scenes stuff, how I set things up and, you know. But that's entirely up to you, that's your decision to make. But just be warned, past this point, you can't be cross or upset about anything you see, because I've warned you. So, episode 24 has finished. Um, I've edited it and off it goes, rendering and ready to be put up for you to view. Um, I then have to begin my tidy up of the map of stuff and machinery that I've left laying around. Um, jobs that I need to finish off off screen because things like slurrying a field, when you've slurried a field, you've slurried a field, you've slurried a field. And when I've done part of it on the screen already, nobody needs to watch or wants to watch half an hour of me slurring a field. So those things I need to finish off off screen. I get them out of the way, they're tucked away and, and it kind of happens in the background. Um, so mentally I have a list in my head and in this video I'm going to talk about kind of mental checklists, the, the process I go through in my head um, and then while I'm setting up um, to ready for a new episode. So there will be a list in my head of things that I want to do and that I know I need to do, that I, things I need to get into place, um, it might be I need to sell something or move something or finish off you know, a bit of a harvest or it might be, you know, whatever it might be. And that's what I'm going to show you specifically for this episode, but that's the process I go through after every episode. And it's always different. Sometimes I'll finish one episode off and there's not really much to prepare. I can just run straight into the next episode. Other episodes, when I was going on I actually Field 50, it took ages. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is refill the slurry tanker, uh, the um, slurry spreader, because I need to finish off the slurry on this field off screen. That will be done, and then once that's done, the uh, tanker will be empty. I'm going to move that to one side and get that out of the way. Um, and it kind of, there's no real fluid process to it. You'll probably notice as I start going through this that I bounce between jobs. And it's all the jobs you would do when you're farming on your game. Um, so the tank will go to one side, I can move that later on, I need to set this off and slurrying and then I can get off and do a different job. So the slurrying will continue, although I'm very conscious of the fact with the lone oak on the left, it's going to decide like it's done now, it's not going to want to go off with a worker, so I've got to get past that. And then when it comes back down the other way, I'm probably going to have to manoeuvre it around the tree, otherwise it could go off and, you know, it will slurry spread on a field that's already been done. Um, I have already moved the um, the challenger is up in the corner of this field. That's got the um, oh, what's that got in it? The corner of the field. That's got to be put into the tanker, and then that will be taken over towards field 27 because in the next episode, that's the field I'm going to be working on as well as doing sugar beet. So machinery will kind of be moved um, because again you have that situation that. Um, if I'm, if I could spend a whole episode just moving machinery from one place to the next, ready to do a harvest. Um, so that's why I normally do jump cuts, or I get some of the machinery there already, or you know, um, that's just kind of how it works. So now that's hopefully set up. It is going to still play up when it gets to the uh, to the lone oak, but I can move bits of machinery. And it, does, it sometimes gets a bit frantic. There's stuff happening and going on all over the place. Um, and I'm often very... What's the best way to describe it? Um, flighty. Um, I get distracted very, very easily. So I'll start doing one job. Then I'll see something else that needs to be done. I'll go and do that. I might bounce around two or three jobs. Then suddenly remember the job that I originally started doing that I have to come back to. And you'll probably notice that a bit as I kind of set this up. But as I've already said, the slurry tank is now turning away and going the wrong way. So I need to jump across that and bring it back. So around the uh, lone oak I will now go and then hopefully set it off on the last strip down and fingers crossed I won't run out of slurry 
before it gets to the bottom. What I have also noticed as I turn there is that right in front of me I left the harvester. At the end of the episode where, where I emptied, that's just where it ended up. So what I've got to do now is set this off running and then get into the harvester and move that out of the way before this gets there. This is what I mean about bouncing around. You suddenly see things and think, oh, I must do that. I must move this, you know, and that's what ends up happening. And just in the nick of time, I get the harvester out of the way. Now, I was moving originally the grain cart, um, the um, chaser bin, auger wagon. Um, and obviously now that's been left behind because I've bounced onto two different machines. And while I'm in this, I thought, well, I might as well take this down to the um, the semi-trailer and then and I load into it. I'll have to come back and collect the um, auger wagon later on to do that. And then all of this machinery needs to be tidied, moved. The corn header on the front of this I'm not going to need for doing the harvest um, in the next episode. So that will need to be put away. And all these things are going through my head. I'm trying to work out what needs to go where, um, what needs to be unloaded, what needs to be moved. And often it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. And there are often times where I forget things. And I'll miss something completely. And partway through the next episode, I'll suddenly remember where I've left a piece of machinery or um, something I should have done already. You know, you, you might miss out on a good price on a crop or something because you see the good price and you think, well, I must do that. Um, and then you completely forget. Now, what will also happen is normally, if I've got nothing to do over the night and I'm ready for the next episode in the morning, I will just skip the night, as you can do. Now I've just realised that's finished and it's going to jump over to the next field, which it doesn't need to. Um, so taking control of that, I'll move it out of the way. And this is exactly what I mean. So this is now going to go up towards the top of field 49 because mentally I'm, I'm preparing to move machinery in that direction all out towards field 27. Because when I harvest field 27 or field 25 that I bought with sugar beet um, and then heading off towards field 25, which has also got sugar beet in, I need to bring my circus of machinery with me. I need to make sure I've got the slurry spreader, I've got the cultivator, I've got the plough if I need it. Um, so all of that machinery will gradually be moved across the map in stages. Another reason why the whole, you know, wouldn't it be great to have follow me? Um, you could do this all in one swift movement. You drive the lead vehicle and all the other vehicles follow, follow along behind you. Unfortunately, that's not possible. So a lot of these types of things, like I say, this happens behind the scenes. The driving backwards and forwards across a map and and do i um jump between machinery off screen absolutely i do um you know when you're doing a storyline you try to make it look or seem seamless and fluid and realistic do i jump between vehicles yeah of course i do you know i think everybody's aware of the fact and that's what i said about ruining the magic you know i don't profess to be a filmmaker or anything like that um but to try and make it a little bit more immersive, I try to avoid those leaps if possible. And if I do do those leaps, I try to make it look like I've still done the walk anyway. You know, it's all part of the process of making the episode. Um, so now, the quad track's gone from there to the cultivator because Field 49 needs to be cultivated. I'm not going to spend an episode doing that. This is going to happen during the night. Um, which, you know, if you're running your own farm and you're doing it and you're not recording a video or whatever, this process you'll go through yourself anyway. So, finally, <laughs> back to the auger, auger bin, um, auger wagon. That's now going to go down to the semi trailer and unload into it. And then whatever's in that will then get taken off to the hogs and put into the silo. Um, I think I was at 140,000 litres. I did two full loads. I was hoping I'd get another full load, but I don't think I will. Um, this has got 53,000 litres in it, and the other one had. I can't remember what I just put in it. But it'll be under 70,000 litres anyway. But it's all going down for the hogs. Um, that's, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to think, again, going through the process in my head of what do I need to do? Where do I need to move things to? If I move something from A to B, do I need to then move from B to C? Or can it stay there and I collect it later on? You know, um, And it's it's all kind of, it's all part of the process. This is what people wanted to know, it's what they wanted to see. It feels a bit odd kind of showing it, you know, it's not particularly exciting. It's all the farming aspects you would still do, you know, and, and the reason I don't always film into the night 
or during the night is because the lighting's terrible. Um, and, you know, while I'm recording, I often watch it and think, OK, that's fine, it's no problem at all. Then when you play it back, or I'm in editing, you suddenly think, that's really dark, you can't see a thing. So for a viewer, whilst, yes, it is part of the process, and people do work into the night with the big work lights and stuff on, um, of course they would, it's not always best to view, so that's why I try to avoid it as much as possible. Right, this now is going to go all the way over to field 27. And I'm going to put it over by field 27, ready for the harvest in the next episode. Mentally I'm thinking what I'm going to do with the harvester is bring it over but not all the way to field 27. So maybe the start of the episode will be me driving the harvester over ready to do the harvest. Again, it's a process of thinking for the next episode, how do I want to start the story? How do I want to start the episode? What things am I going to be doing? And, and how do I build that narrative into the episode? So that, that's kind of, you work out where you want things to be, where you're going to start from. Um, so now that all of the, um, the corn maze is in the semi-trailer, that's now got to go to the hog farm. So that will get moved. If I manage to get it hooked up. And you'll probably notice as well, off screen I don't always put the cover on. It's little things like that, you know, you, you just kind of, you're very conscious of when you're doing an episode. Um, people will comment and say, you wouldn't drive with the cover off, so you always make sure you put it on. Off screen, you know, it's 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 not necessarily a reason to do it, you just get over there and get it unloaded and get it sorted out. So this is a classic example of what I was talking about. I came into the menu here to make sure and see how much corn I had in storage. So the corn's now going up. Um, and hopefully, there you go, 188,000. But what I then noticed is that I've got a good price on um, sunflower, which I'm not using. I fulfilled my sunflower contract, but I've got 29,000 litres of it spare. Um, but there's a good price. Although the price is dropping, 1,408 is pretty good. So I'm now thinking I might go and sell that sunflower. But I can't wait till the morning and do it during the episode because that price is plummeting. I don't know if the price above is going to go up or not and keep going up, so it's a risk. Do I wait till the morning or not? Um, so what I've decided to do, and I know it will be off screen and I will probably mention it at the start of the, the episode because people wonder how the money's gone up, down, you know, and that's something else I have to make sure I try and do is I balance the books because how I do this with subscriber contracts is you know, do I use money box cheats? Of course I do. I have to off screen because if someone makes a payment to me of a hundred thousand dollars, I can't magic that money from from you know. It has to come from somewhere. Um, so yeah, I do. And then I will lease equipment to offset if I need to bring that money down if I sell something or I owe someone money or you know. So you kind of I fiddle with it in different ways so that I try and keep the balance correct. And there are very very eagle-eyed people out there that watch my videos that keep a track. I used to do it when I watch people's videos. People like Dad go in and you know, I'd watch an episode and then the next episode there might be £200,000 more in the bank. My first thought would be where's that come from? I don't understand. You know, So there are people that keep a very close track on it. You know, I'm not saying down to the, you know, the dollar, the pound you know, specifically, but they are very aware if you suddenly lose a load of money or you've suddenly got a load of money, how did that happen? So I'm very conscious of the fact I try and make sure it all balances and works properly. And I'll show you that later on. Um, it, it will make sense later on. Because I'm going to move on to something which um, will require me to, to fiddle around with that a little bit. Um, I can't do XML files and things like that. I'm not on PC. I can't adjust my finances that way. I, I have to do it in some way. So now I'm going to take this sunflower off over to Lone, uh, Lone Wolf. And we'll sell that. Which will mean the money will go up again. Um... And here we are. So, you've probably also noticed that I am kind of talking very fluidly through what I'm doing because unlike normally when I do an episode, I will talk while I'm recording. For doing this, I did all of the work, all the things I had to do, and now I'm adding the voice over the top afterwards. Um, I just thought that might work a little bit neater and it'll be easier for me to explain what I'm doing rather than kind of jumping and chopping between jobs at the time so that's how I've decided to do it this time but there we go so we've made a nice bit of money on that something to add but then in the morning people will think well, hang on a minute we've got more money again 
Um, so what I'm now doing is because I'm thinking for the morning I also mentioned the end of episode 24 that um, we were thinking of getting a new truck because we had enough money in the bank to do that but I've also realised there's a job I need to do overnight that's going to require me to use the new truck so that's going to be one of those ones that's going to be a purchase that happens off screen but you will see it in the next episode that will be talked about and mentioned in the next episode so I've had to bring all of this over here because I'm preparing this ready for episode 25 where the new truck will be, the semi-trailer will be the um, twin star, is the twin star isn't it, yeah the twin star will be ready to be sold um, because um, we're buying a new truck for, for Jockey Inc so that's all kind of part of the process now what I've decided to do is get a hook lift and this is what I said about spoiler alerts if you don't want to know what I'm getting in the next episodes close your eyes you're going to see it in a minute anyway so it doesn't really matter <clears throat> but we're going with the black sheep modding um, 850 hook I want rear hitch and I want the front three point linkage that's very important um, you'll see why in a moment and I'm going to do it in the, the jockey ink logo that I made up that I think was in one episode and I need to get it back into some more episodes um, was black and red with the white background so black white and red is kind of the, the scheme I'm going for black and red predominantly but um, black white and red so that's what I'm setting it all up with um, and I want it with semi support not hook lift support there we go so it's a big chunk of our money gone but that was the whole point we had enough to be able to do that so what I'm now looking at is the finances and I'm looking to see how much money I've got that's really important because when I then have to adjust finances at any point I need to make sure I get back to where I am um, I also want snowblower um, I know I leased this before I'm going to lease it again now um, to use overnight and it will all become very clear in a moment why I'm doing that um, but as you've probably noticed I've now moved away from all the machinery that was over the other side of the map um, and I will come back to that later on to move bits around but this is what I'm talking about I kind of I do one job move a piece of machinery that leads on to another job which leads to another one I do end up coming back around to the, the other things that need to be done because it all has to be done ready for the next episode I, you know and this is why sometimes an episode might take me three or four hours to, to do simply because the prep work might take an hour and a half and then recording might take me an hour, hour and a half then editing might take me an hour and then rendering and you know, putting it all up other times if there's no prep work to be done I can do an episode in an hour um, it could be that quick so <coughs> excuse me um, so this is kind of setting it all up for the next job that needs to be done um, if you remember I did the episode where I did the um, silage harvest on barley for Barris and he wanted 500,000 litres this I'm moving around because that's going to be ready to be sold in the next episode um, but Barris wanted 500,000 litres of silage I took it to the BGA, it fermented so I spoke to ba Barris, we've been chatting backwards and forwards and Barris said he's going to deal with it, he's going to get it removed um, that's not going to be part of my storyline, my storyline was simply getting the chaff in there, fermenting it Barris wanted 500,000 litres, that's it I'm not selling it myself on the episode he's arranging to come and collect it so part of the narrative, the storyline will be that Barris or his team of guys, whoever it is, has come and they've collected the silage out of the bunker silo which means I've now got to dispose of 500,000 litres of silage and also by the morning I've got to make it look like I didn't do it you know it's, it's, it's sometimes it's a little bit tricky now I've got two options here and this is the other reason it gets a little bit um, you know you have to play around with it a little bit I now need to clean this bunker silo out now what I can do there are two options I can fill up using the, the snowblower I can fill up the 70,000 litre trailer if I reset that trailer the trailer will appear at the reset point empty and the silage that was in it will have vanished but that means I've got to keep going backwards and forwards to the reset point to collect the trailer and bring it back again which will take time my other option is that I fill up the, the trailer I sell it at the BGA which means my money will go up I think I'm sitting on 533,000 roughly at the moment um, so yeah my money will go up but then by the morning when I start the next episode I have to get it back to that again so any money I make on this silage I've got to get rid of in some way 
so I'll do that by lease, leasing vehicles and that I'll show you later on as well so what I'm going to do now is this is going to take a while 500,000 litres um, 70,000 litres per load it's going to take a little while um, I'm not going to show you all of the loads being done because like I say it's the same as when I do a normal episode you want to see the behind the scenes stuff this is behind the scenes this is what I'll be doing you wouldn't see this normally in an episode um, but then you don't want to sit for another half an hour watching me em empty a bunker silo um, and this is all prep work this is all stuff that I need to get done um, and it just kind of it happens the magic fairies come and they sort out all these bits in the background um, so yeah it's uh, all part and parcel I hope I'm not boring you I hope if you're still with me for sticking with it thank you very much because um, like I say there are going to be some other bits where I adjust the finances and get things ready what I will do at some point is speed up the time and get us so it's almost light because it's far far easier for the last few jobs I can see what I'm doing um, it's alright here because it's quite well lit at the BJ but not all of the fields are and it can be a little bit awkward so uh, yeah clear this out snowblower works very well um, I tried to use it when I was collecting uh, grass um, for the bunker silo and, and there's that I think it was a combination between the snowblower and the Flegel trailer I was using it just didn't seem to like it this combination works very very well um, the snowblower is by Toxicom um, obviously the the truck and the trailer are both black suit modding mods and this fills up to 70,000 litres no problem no splattering no coughing it just does it and gets on with it um, so it's, it's a good combination and it's another reason why I went for the hook lift truck with the front three point linkage because it gives you more options if there are jobs you need to do you can get them done using this bit of kit so um, I realise this is taking a little bit of time to fill this up so uh, I'll stop talking for a moment and you can just watch So, like I said, the option I've gone for is to tip into the BGA. So I was at 533,000. So in the morning, when I talk about buying the new truck and that the money I made from selling the sunflowers came to 720 odd thousand, then buying the truck brought me down to 533. Nobody would know normally that I've done any of this. I will talk about the fact all the stuff in the BJ is gone, that the Barrish's guys have come to collect it, but nobody would know. So what I've got to do now is any money I make on this, I've got to then get rid of. Um, that has to disappear by the morning when I'm ready to start the next episode. What I do want to check is, oh, because it'll only take a certain amount. Now what I need to do now is probably turn up the speed to times five, um, because that will help the digester to run more efficiently so if I turn that up times 5 it's what I always do when I'm selling silage especially if you're using um, conveyor belts um, if it would just what you'll find is if you're on a continuous flow and you want that price to stay very very high you um, you make sure you turn it up times 5 then it doesn't clog up and splutter it's, once that splutters the price will drop when you're selling silage for the time being what I'm doing it doesn't matter if it does the price could plummet because I'm not I'm not supposed to be making anything out of this so that's why it really doesn't matter how I do this um, but this will continue um, I'll sell the silage I'll fill up the trailer sell the silage and we'll continue doing that through the night
So that's the last of it. The last 10,000 litres gone in and I'm now up to 720,000 which is where I shouldn't be. I shouldn't have that money. Um, we're all going to getting rid of that in a little while. This now needs to get put back ready for the start of the next episode back at the store. Um, for all intents and purposes it hasn't been used. No one would know. Um, that's at least the theory behind it. Um, I've just realised I've really come in the wrong way about this, haven't I? Now, originally I had the truck pulled up behind or in front of the semi ready to drive off. But what I want to do is make it look like it's been kind of delivered, dropped off. It's little things like that. And I know it doesn't, for most people, it won't make any difference. Um, something uh, my, my brother and I man cave beer reviews go over check him out does some great beer reviews from his man cave oddly enough um we've chatted about a lot of times on films and various different things that if something's done very very well you don't notice it because it just works it's just there you just assume it's part and parcel it's what's always should be there like music scores in a film and things like that you don't always realise there's music playing when you're watching a film, but then when you stop and think about it, you realise, oh yeah, that is, and it just works. What you do realise is when it's terrible, when it stands out, when it's awful, when it's done badly, it's really, really obvious. So it's little things that you do that people don't often notice. Now, what I'm doing now, I sped up the time, jumped ahead, I'm now moving the harvester into position ready for the start of the next episode. What I want to do is get a bit of light because I need to be able to see what I'm doing for a few bits I'm doing now. So I sped the time up to 120. You can skip night anywhere between, I think, 8 o'clock through to 9 or 10. I normally do it around 9-ish. After about 10 o'clock, it won't let you skip night after that. So because I worked right the way through past that, what I've had to do is speed up time to get through the night. And um, what will also mean is off screen what I would do is jump to the animals clean the animal troughs up regularly over the course of the night otherwise the, um, the health and you know if you're playing without seasons the reproduction rate and all that will drop if it's if it's a mess overnight and that kind of thing so um, that gets done this I'm gonna put here just by the taco stand because like I said I'm thinking in my head to the start of the next episode I want to show the harvester being driven down to start the next harvest that's kind of the plan what I've also remembered is the cultivator. The cultivator finished field 49 and while the silage was going on at one point when I was emptying one of the loads I came over, moved the, the cultivator and put it onto field 44 because that was the other field I said I wanted to get done. I ploughed that during episode 24 but I just want to get it cultivated. Again, you don't want to watch a whole episode of cultivating. It happens in the background it's, if you're multitasking, if I was harvesting on field 27 and this was happening on field 20, uh, field 44, you wouldn't necessarily see it anyway. So, um, so what I also then realised as I was moving that, I thought I'll take it over towards field 27, is that I hadn't cultivated field 29 by the pig farm. I hadn't cultivated field 20 behind where I am now. I also haven't cultivated field 1, but that's a massive field and I don't think I'm going to... I'll probably just direct drill onto that, I think. I'm not too sure at the moment. I might bring this back over and do it. Um, again, what goes through my mind, a lot of people comment and say, you can um, you can direct drill. You don't need to cultivate. If you've ploughed, you can seed onto a ploughed field. And I've, I've said it a few times in the next place. I know that is the case, and I think it's probably a big part of it is my OCD in that, in my head it needs to be cultivated you need to prepare the seed bed I know in real life that's what you need to do and in game you don't need to it allows you not to do that and I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination that I do completely realistic gaming because I don't you know I try to be realistic ish but it's not in realism there's no way I do it fully realistically but I suppose mentally in my head it's all part of that process so I don't know that's just kind of why I do the sort of way I do it um, now, right, so this I've just suddenly remembered was part of one of my contracts from um, uh, Johnson's Farms 
because I said about doing the sugar beet harvest and I leased his potato harvesting equipment, Johnson's Farms contacted me to say they had a Roper Tiger 6 um, that they could lend me for doing the sugar beet harvest. And I've just realised at this time in the morning um, that I didn't set it up. So, um, and luckily I haven't adjusted the money yet because this isn't something I'm leasing. This is something that somebody's lending me. So because I hadn't adjusted the balance yet, what I'm now doing is leasing the Tiger, the header, and the header trailer, which I'll go over in a minute. And, uh, oh, I might do it now. That's running. Now, again, this is this bitty is what I'm talking about. I bounced between machinery. So I jumped from the cultivator, trying to get to the Roper Tiger, and jumped onto the Bobcat, and realised I hadn't cleaned the sheep out for a little while because I sped up time so again part of the background you know I'll clean this up put it in the trough then I'll jump I'll carry on and jump on till I get to the rope of tiger I may jump to another piece of machinery and then think oh I haven't moved out or this needs to go here or I haven't finished off doing whatever it might be and this is what I'm talking about it seems very scrappy um, when you see the behind the scenes stuff you know Everyone talks about, you know, and, and I, I love the fact people like my videos and I try to make them, I'm trying to get better at making them all the time, trying to make them more professional and better edited and better sort of angles for screenshots and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm just like everybody else. I, I make mistakes, I jump between machinery, sometimes I forget to move things, sometimes I forget to clean out the pigs, sometimes, you know. Um, Sometimes I show those things in the videos. I show that I've made mistakes. Sometimes if it happens while I'm prepping for a video, you don't get to see it. So so what I'm doing now is the, the Roper stuff that I've, in Bunny Rabbit ears, I've leased. Um, this has come from Johnson's Farm, which they're lending me. This needs to be left here at the main store. So in the morning, in episode 25, part of the narrative being it's been shipped, it's been delivered for me to use in the harvest today. Um, we are on Tuesday. Um, the other thing I have done off screen, um, for those of you that have been watching the Let's Play, I go to the job sheet board every morning um, and Jockey Inc has left me the, my set of instructions for that day. So what I'll do over every night time, I will go and I will edit that map or that um, job sheet, that job planner and add in the new jobs. I'll cross off the ones that I've done from the day before. The ones that I haven't done, I put the arrow across to put them into the next day. Um, that, again, that's another one of those things that happens off screen. I do that um, in the editing, and then when I get to it, I add that bit in. So that's kind of happened already. So this I just want to, if I can. I haven't left anything in a really good position, have I? Um, what I will do is just put it over to one side. It doesn't have to be neat. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's just been dropped off and left. The store's shut, so whoever's delivered it and brought it over has just put it there. That's kind of, in my mind, how will it work? Um, the truck, I don't want it left there. I want, again, to make that look like it's been it's been delivered, shipped. It wouldn't already be hooked up to, to the semi-trailer because that's my semi-trailer. Now, at this point, Silly G came into the room and she said to me, um, aren't you expecting a delivery of hogs from Charleston Farms? And I said, yes, you're absolutely right. But by a complete, and this is absolute luck, this was not planned. Um, the eight hogs that I sold to Barris and Taco Farmer, when I pulled them up and left in the diner, are still in the back of that trailer because I didn't reset it. What I normally would do, reset the trailer, the hogs will disappear, no money to change his hands because, you know, they've already technically paid me. They were still in it, which actually works in my favor because I still haven't amended the money. I still hadn't sold those hogs. So in getting a delivery of 25 hogs from Charleston's, da uh, Charleston's dairies, all I've got to do is add in, what was it, 14, how many am I adding in? Can't remember now. Um, enough hogs the 17 to bring up to 25 that was a complete fluke and it was only the fact CLEG walked into the room and reminded me that this even happened at all because I had forgotten about the delivery of hogs I put it on the planning sheet 
I did the planning sheet a couple of hours ago um, and forgot. So I would have started the episode, I would have gone to the sheet, I would have put it up in the editing and then narrated over it and suddenly thought I didn't sort the hogs out. And then I'm in trouble because I wouldn't know, I'd be trying to rack my brains thinking how am I going to do this and make it look fluid, make it look like they've been delivered because I wouldn't have been able to. So that was a com honestly complete chance. And the fact that I hadn't amended and adjusted the finances yet meant I still had money there to buy those hogs and make it look like somebody else has given them to me as payment. You know, it's it's how I have to adjust things. It's just the way it works out. So like I say, this I want to put to one side to make it look like it's been delivered. Then my job will then be when I come to collect it, I hook up the semi and the semi trailer and off we go. That's, you know, how I'm setting this up. What I do need to do now, though, is adjust the money, because I'm getting to a point where I'm pretty much... This is what I'm thinking now, is everything is in place. I think I've pretty much done everything I need to, to set up. The only thing that's different is the finances. The finances need to be amended. And here's what I do. Um, what I found in doing this, if you lease equipment, obviously that takes money off your off your account without buying a piece of equipment. One of the most expensive things to lease are the sugar beet harvesters. And they come in at about 43, 43 and a half thousand. So what I'll do is lease one, which has dropped my money down straight away. And then I'll go back into the, the menu and I'll get rid of it. I'll give it back. So I've leased it, given it back. So I've lost the money, it's gone off that. But what I've got to do now is work out how much more I need to lose off of here and I think I can do one more. So that's least a second one, which takes me down to 534,000. I now go back into the menu, give it back, make sure I give back the right thing, otherwise it all goes horribly wrong. Now I've got to get rid of a thousand to bring me down to 533, which is where I need to be. Luckily, this header comes in at just over 1,000. And this is the game. I have to fiddle around and find something that works out just right. So in doing that, then I give it back again. I'm now down to 533,514, which is pretty much almost exactly what I was on during the night. So the last thing left to do before I'm ready to start episode 25 was finish off the cultivator which was on field 20. Now I now need to get this over towards field 27 um, and that will then sit there and wait. I, I didn't show you me taking over the um, auger wagon. I did take the auger wagon over there on the back of the Challenger. So the auger wagon is already there. This will go and join it. The start of the episode I will have to collect the hogs. I'll talk about the new truck being delivered. I'll talk about Barris collecting the, the silage. I might even go to the BGA and show you the fact the silage is gone. This is what I was talking about, losing the magic, because this will be all the start of the new episode. Then I will start by taking the harvester over, ready to start the harvest on field 27. The roper will then go off to start off its sugar beet harvesting, and that's kind of how it will get set up. So all that's left for me to do now is set myself up back at the main yard. Um, what I normally do is make it look like everything was closed up at night, so I close the shutters. So when I start the episode, I'm starting off fresh in the morning. Um, so I'll close that one, close that one. I'll have to open and then close this one, but that's no big deal. Um, and then simulate the fact that obviously I sleep upstairs on that mezzanine just there. Close this one down as well. Um, and then what will happen is the episode will start from up on the mezzanine. Um, that's it that's how i set the video up i hope you found this interesting informative in some way shape or form if you have give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do as i settle myself down to start episode 25 thanks for watching <laughs>